Welcome to our live stream. I'm here today with art prof teaching artist Jordan McCracken Foster. And today we are talking about self promotion mistakes that artists should avoid. If you would like to grow as an artist and you can't afford an art class, we've got everything you need here at Art Prof critiques and tutorials. Let's start out, Jordan, by talking about why self promotion is so important for many artists. Well, if if you're trying to make art your career, one of the things that you want to do is get your name out there. And when you're brand new, if no one knows who you are, no one's going to do those things for you. And so guilt, building that skill of learning how to promote yourself and learning how to market yourself and get your name out there, that's incredibly important. And it's essential if you want to survive in this industry. And that's why you'll see a lot of artists continuing to sell books, make their YouTube channels, sell merchandise, uh, just to get you know things going. Because that's just the way they, that's the way they function, that's the way they survive. And self-promotion, I do think that there are many extremes. The extreme version of success is that you do really well, everybody loves you, they think you're fabulous and you're well-respected, right? What is the worst case scenario of self-promotion, Jordan, that you can think of? Uh, that your reputation can be tarnished, uh, that people just, don't like you because of something that you've done. Uh, there's several situations I could think of who are people who are artists and people who aren't, and they've gotten so big and they do a couple things that just rub people the wrong way. And yeah, you never want to be on that side where you, you got, you're canceled as 2020 culture would, would say. And there's also a lot in between. There are people who are maybe not massively successful, but maybe they show up and you just go, oh, it's them again, right? Mm -hmm. And so you get annoyed and you're just bothered <laughs> by their presence, right. not in a terrible way, but you're just not that thrilled to see them. <laughs> <enough. laughs> yeah, I think there's a couple of artists who are just like, yeah, we don't, I don't need to see you right now. Just, you can go in the corner. <laughs> And so we have this Raul Shast cartoon. If you guys don't know who Raul Shast is, she does a lot of cartoons for The New Yorker. She's one of my favorite artists. She's one of the few cartoonists. I will laugh out loud until my stomach hurts when I look at her stuff. And this is an older comic. And so it's called Blog Breakdown, but it could easily pertain to social media. And Jordan and I were just saying, wow, this is a pretty accurate representation of social media. <laughs> because mm -hmm. She says that it's a third conspiracy theories and a third is stories about crap somebody cooked, knitted or sewed. And the other third is self promotion. So we have a guy in the lower left saying, buy my book. We have a woman at the bottom saying, buy my paintings. Why do you think this is accurate, Jordan? Because uh, people need to you know, sell their stuff. And thing is, it, it's one thing to make books for yourself or paintings for yourself. But most of the time, 99.999% of the time, I think people want to share these things with the rest of the world. And the world we live in, uh, a lot of people prefer that over keeping it to themselves. And so the best thing that they can do is say, put it on their Facebook or Instagram or YouTube, whatever, TikTok, I don't care. And they just say, here, buy my thing. And um, it's, it, I feel like it's today's version of selling something out of the trunk of your car. Uh, it's just much cleaner this way. We have a question from Neil who's saying, I'm still in high school. Should I worry about this right now? What do you think, Jordan? Yeah, I don't think it's ever too early to start promoting yourself because th there's one artist, uh, I think his name is Ethan Castillo, and he started uh, tabling at conventions when he was like eight or nine years old. And he's well known throughout the industry as that kid who is going to be you know, the next rock star. He's known for drawing Spider-Man. He's got industry pros like buying his books and things like that. And he's in, he started off as a, as a little kid and now he's in high school and he's doing his thing. So uh, I don't think uh, just being in high school should be something to inhibit you or, or make you stop wanting to promote yourself. At the same time though, I would also say if you don't feel like it, it's fine. So it's it's not that you shouldn't do it. It's just that, you totally can. I mean, it's possible to make that happen. Okay, so the first thing to not do 
we are gonna say is don't ask another artist to share your artwork. So for example, this is an Instagram message that I got literally two days ago. And by the way, this is not their artwork. I just pasted in one of my old pieces because that's really mean and I don't wanna do that to that person. So this person who I never met before, had never seen their username anywhere on my Instagram said, can you please repost my artwork on your story once? Please, 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 just this one. I'd be very, very, very grateful. Take a wild guess if you guys think I shared it on my story. Why would I? I mean, the person has no connection to me whatsoever. And if anything, now if I do see the username again, I'll go, oh, that's that person that bothered me to share their stuff. And it makes me not want to share their stuff, right? Like Jordan, you got this message <laughs> the other day. What was your reaction? I was like, I don't know you. Like, I I have no connection to you. Um, it doesn't, what it, what it feels like is I'm being used almost. It feels like my platform is being used to promote your work. And I, you know, I feel like if I'm gonna share your work, I should do it out of respect for, for your work and because I feel impressed to do it. Uh, like my friends, if they post something and I share it, it's not because they ask me to do it most of the time. It's usually because they, you know, I want, to promote their work and just out of sincerity. And it's sort of like if I were if I was a musician and I were to, you know, send a message to Beyonce or something like that saying, hey, promote my song, like, who am I to hurt? You know, there it's just weird. It's a very strange thing. And I don't think uh I don't think it's really necessary or helpful to someone to do that. I like this comment from Blue Will Spirit who's saying you never get a second chance to make a first impression. And it's true. I mean, I think sometimes people will look at Instagram and say, oh, that artist has 10,000 followers. But when you look at Instagram every day, like most of us do, I do recognize usernames. I mean, I know who was a jerk in the past and who's leaving real comments. It's pretty clear. People really do remember that type of thing. So I would say, you guys, definitely, if you have not watched our social media lecture, definitely, because there's a lot of stuff that's related to, okay, well, how do you get around doing that? And here's how you do it, guys. Basically, Song Kang, who was one of my former students, she gave me this published book that she worked on forever and ever and ever. I mean, she was selling it on her shop, but she said, oh, I want to give this to you. And I thought, oh my gosh, that's so nice. I'm gonna make a post and tell everybody about her fabulous book. So what's the difference here, Jordan, between Song and those other people? With Song, um, first off, Song was my TA that in my sophomore year, so I always thought she was really awesome, but there, there's a respect there. There's, um, you know, it, it Song went out of her way to give you something of hers that she had worked hard on, and it was a, it was a very special gift. And, to receive something like that, it's like, oh, of course, why wouldn't I support it, uh, support this and post this again? Versus, uh, and, and that's not what she sought out for. It's not like she gave it to you to, to post on your page. It's just something you felt like doing. Whereas some of the other uh, posts that we saw where it was, hope you'll follow me back or can you post my artwork? It's more like you're begging and you're trying to ride off of someone else's coattails. And that just doesn't, it feels disingenuous when you do that, when, when someone does things like that. We have a comment from Nina who is asking, do I respond to these DMs because I feel mean just deleting it? What did you do, Jordan, when you got the hope you follow me back message? I haven't responded to it. Uh, I have my settings in such a way where if I don't follow that person, they can't see if I read their message or not. So that's kind of like a safety thing for me. If, like, if I don't feel like it, I just block them. Or sometimes I'll just put, put like it or whatever. And, I get, sometimes by what by what they say, I get a feeling of if they're just trying to be nice or if they want something from me. Um, so that's a personal thing that I think everyone has to gauge for themselves. I think it depends. I mean, for the message that I got, I just wrote, sorry, that's it. Because I feel sort of bad, like you said, not replying. On the other hand, I mean, maybe someday we'll have a million subs and then I'll have too many messages to reply. So I, I think that's a personal thing. I don't think there's anything wrong with ignoring it. I think people would know, oh, you have all these followers. You can't really reply 
all the time. Now, here's another example where I did share without somebody asking me. And so Kathy Speranza, who I used to teach with at RISD, who is a brilliant painter and who I'm intensely jealous of, but then I decided, oh, I'll be friends with her. That'll be easier. So <laughs> anyway, she just released this remote painting class, which by the way, you guys should sign up for if you can do it. And so when she posted on Instagram that she had released the third class, I reposted it on my story because I want everybody to know about how fabulous she is. And we did shoot a tutorial with her. You see the thumbnail on the side. And if you want to tie yourself over, I did do an interview with her that you guys should definitely check out. And so I think what you guys are seeing, it's like you don't really want to share stuff unless you actually know the person and have a relationship and want to help them out. This is not like a random one-time encounter, don't you think, Jordan? Yeah, definitely. And, and I always find it better if they're really trying to become like a friend of yours or, or even if you uh, they want you to mentor them in some way just build that relationship. There have been times where people, you know, share my stuff and I'll check their artwork out. I'm like, oh, this is really cool. And we've had back and forth conversations and now it's a regular thing for us to respond to each other. And it and some of these people I've never met or even been in the same country at the same time as them. And so it just happens naturally. So I don't think those relationships should be forced, but it's always really cool when it happens. Serafina is asking, how do you know who you can be vulnerable with about insecurities about your art and who should you always show confidence in it? That is a really good question because we all need spaces where we don't have to be perfect and we can admit that we're struggling or something is not working out so well. And there's other people, that's not a good idea <laughs> to talk to them about all your weaknesses and insecurities. So Jordan, how do you make that distinction? Uh, I Honestly, I wouldn't even put art in the equation. I would just say, do I trust them with this information in general? Because there have been times where I've made artwork that was very personal to me and they were very uh, intense stories. And I know other people who've gone through similar experiences. And if I don't feel comfortable sharing this information with them, regardless of the art, then I don't know if I would feel motivated to tell them if I did a drawing about it, you know? and. Uh, I, th I think it really just comes down to, can you really get down with this person? Is this person going to tell every person that they see down the street um, your personal business? And that's something you have to determine for yourself. Uh, I think everyone knows someone who they would not want to trust with important information or personal information. I think it also, Serafina, depends on the context. For example, you guys know we have a Discord here at ArtProf, and I think people know that our investment in everybody who watches us is, is in learning and progress and getting better. I mean, we're not a commercial gallery where we're trying to sell your artwork. So if I'm talking to people in Discord, I'm okay telling them, hey, I'm insecure about this too. This is hard for me as well. I find this challenging. But if I'm having a studio visit with a curator at a regional museum, I am not, I'm just going to be like, I'm the best thing ever. You know, like you're yeah. just going to have a totally different attitude. So I would just trust your instinct. Like Jordan said, who, who do you really feel is going to listen to you in that way and understand? We have another don't do, which is don't go to somebody else's artist opening and give out your own promotional materials. For example, I give lectures very often. And usually after I give a lecture, there's always people that come up and they want to talk to me or ask me a question. And that's fine. But I had this one guy who came up to me and he just gave me his business card. Nothing else. He, he didn't even say hello. I It was just, here's my business card. I'm like, what do you want me to do with this? Like, this is not helpful. Like, what was he thinking, Jordan? You know, it goes back to the self-interest thing uh, about, sh you know, share my, can you share my work on your page? It's the exact same thing, just with a business card and not social media. And ultimately, I think it comes from a root of selfishness and just wanting to get ahead. And in a situation where they're just giving you their business card and not saying hi or starting a conversation or relationship, it just sounds like I'm going to step on you until I get to where I need to go and then I'm going to toss you to the side. And that that's how it comes off to me, at least. 
Well, especially if it's at somebody's solo show. Like this is a solo show that I had a gallery several years ago. And Jordan, if you came and said, hey guys, come to my show, it's next week. That's so slimy. It's like if you went to a wedding and you're not the bride and you're wearing a bridal gown, like it's not your show. Right. So, like, right. Not cool guys. Yeah. And I like this comment from W315 who says, what you share becomes part of your reputation. So Jordan, how do you know what to share? Sharing in terms of uh, like artwork or what do, you, what do you? Well, just what you write online, what you say to people, what you write in the Art Prof Discord, like basically your internet trail. <laughs> I see. Well, because the internet is one of those places that you can't ever really take things back very easily because <laughs> it stays up there forever. Even if you delete the post, someone's taking a screenshot or whatever, someone is able to pull it up. You always want to put your best foot forward. And I think uh, being honest with yourself and with your audience is always a great thing. But there are certain times where really harsh judgments or uh, really messed up uh, decisions like plagiarizing or you know, insulting someone or something like that, those could come off and uh, really terribly and bite you in the butt down the line. You got to be careful. I mean, somebody actually said to me, and I don't think this is overly dramatic, don't share anything online that you don't want seen or read in a courtroom. And I think that is really, really smart because it's true. Nothing really disappears. Once it's on your phone, mm -hmm. it's there. <laughs> and yeah. You can't always get rid of it. So it's really hard. The next one we're going to talk about is not dissing other artists in order to get attention. And honestly, I don't know why people do this, because why would you think this is going to reflect well on you? Maybe they're not thinking it through. Jordan, you've definitely seen people do this. So what do they usually do? Yeah. So typically the situation is a person is a, maybe a mediocre artist, maybe just starting, or maybe they feel like they're better than what they are or where they're placed. And they'll go out and seek another popular artist and maybe they don't feel impressed by their work and they'll just start bashing them for whatever reason. And it, it's unnecessary because why, why is, you know, why would you, uh, being mean or dis or dissing this other artist help you get ahead of, uh, get ahead and why would it make people want to look at your artwork or and why would it make your artwork better it just never made sense um, and I knew one uh, I had one classmate who whenever she got a bad grade would post that all on on social media and say all these things like oh this teacher is terrible the reason I got a C was because they're just not a good teacher and I'm gonna you know try and get him fired and send emails, blah, blah. It's like, maybe you just suck right now. Like you just need to practice a little bit more. And that has never crossed their mind. So yeah, you de definitely don't want to do that just to get attention. Well, and I also think there's a lot of stuff online I don't like. There are artists who I think are not very good teachers on YouTube, but I'm not going to name any names. I'm not going to go out and say, don't watch this person's YouTube channel because they don't know what they're talking about. And I did the same thing when I was teaching at RISD. I would have students all the time say, this professor, I can't stand them. They're so and I'm like, I'm not going to say anything. I'm like, all right, yeah. that's it. Like I would definitely gush about a teacher and say, oh, they're fantastic, take their class. But I would never say something about that. And I just think... Guys, not a good idea at yeah. all. Yeah. Here's a comment from Scott. They're saying, if reputation is tarnished, admitting mistakes or making positive changes to make up for mistakes, working forward from that seems better than doubling down. Sometimes you can. We're actually going to look pretty soon at a couple situations where it's pretty hard to come back. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. All right, next one would be don't be rude, duh. But here's the next part of that. Anyone who appreciates your art matters. So what do we mean by that, Jordan? So let's say someone, let's say I post something on Instagram, a piece of artwork, and someone genuinely likes it. And they say, wow, this is really cool. This is inspiring. You know, this is what I want to do with my future. Like those types of comments, those are the people who are genuinely interested in your work. And 
even if you don't have a ton of time for them to like to respond and give a whole essay in response to them, I think they should always be acknowledged because they really took the time out to appreciate their, their work. And you have a fan now. And, you know, how many stories do we hear of fans meeting their, you know, their favorite celebrities and they just completely get tossed aside or they feel disrespected? Uh, it's the same kind of thing. And anyone, if you're putting artwork out and someone appreciates that, I think that's really important because the whole goal is for people to appreciate your work. So, yeah, always acknowledge those people. I mean, I'd be super stoked if Shazia Sikander, who I just love to death, she's a really internationally renowned fine artist. I mean, I would die if she left a comment on my Instagram, but I would never say to myself that her comment matters more than someone else's. And I've said in the past that some of the best comments I've gotten here on ArtProf are from kids who are 13, I had somebody who was 11 say, I watch your videos every day. And I that just made me so happy. And so this idea that one person matters than someone else, not cool. And so if somebody writes something nice to you, don't just say, oh, you don't matter. You're 11. Right. Who cares about your opinion? I think it all matters. Now, it's more work because you have to like <laughs> try to reply to everybody. But I think it, it is important because some people do sort of rank their commenters. Have you seen that, Jordan? I've seen that. Yeah. And, and you know, the way I try to think about it is when I've, I've always known I've wanted to be an artist. And there were times when I was young, like 14, 15 years old, where I would try and you know, reach out to a favorite artist of mine. If they reach back out or if they respond to me, I was over the moon. You know, I was so excited and I felt like, man, this artist really took the time. Like I remember one time I went to a convention and I need and I was asking some for some feedback. And this artist literally spent an hour with me, like during the whole panel, during the whole convention, just doing some draw overs and teaching me stuff. And it was the best thing ever. And he probably doesn't even remember that experience, but it meant so much to me as a kid, j just wanting to be a part of this industry. And also you're here now telling other people that story. And so that time that that artist took with you, it keeps paying forward. And so I don't think there's anything ever wrong with giving people that type of attention. Serafina is saying, do you ever have situations where someone appreciates your work but for the wrong reasons. Serafina, can you give us a little bit more context or specifics there? Because I think I'm not totally sure what you're asking for. And I just wanna look at some other comments here. Neil is saying, let's say you made some of the mistakes. What do you do to redeem yourself? We're gonna get to that. Although Megan B is saying, apologize, brief and sincere. Don't go on and on in an apology. It centers it all on your feelings. I say fess up. If you did something and somebody catches you, admit it, come on. Because you know what? Sometimes in classes when I taught at RISD, I have kids who try so hard to wiggle out of stuff. I'm like, shut up, just tell me the truth, okay? Yeah. I know you totally lied. And they're like, no, I'm like, come on. Just I would be so much less irritated if they would just tell the truth. So sometimes that's pretty helpful. Speaking of success, don't get cocky when you have that success. You guys have to remember where you came from. Now, I don't know that I want to label our prophecy as success, but we crossed 10,000 followers on Instagram, and I won't lie, that felt pretty good from our point of view. So what do you mean, Jordan, by remember where you came from? Well, there is a time in every artist's life where, or every everyone's life where they are just starting out. It doesn't matter if you're an artist, a musician, a chef, whatever, that, you know, there, there are some people who the only person who's impressed by what they do is their own mom. And, and that's it. Maybe not even their siblings, but there's a, you know, as you grow in your craft and you can, and you continue to develop, there's going to be more and more people who are impressed by what you do. And you might hit a certain level of success where you're just, you know, people know you all over the world, but that humility uh, is incredibly important because some people just develop such an ego to the point where they feel like they're too important for uh, the lesser folk or you know p or kids who are inspired by what they do or they treat everyone underneath them like dirt and it's just not right. So always remember that 
you know, you you started with zero just like everybody else. You were no more special than the ne- than your neighbor. Now that's not to say, Jordan, if I make a billion dollars that I won't go to my high school reunion <laughs> and rub it in everybody's face. That's the only way I will ever go to my high school reunion. But no, sure. it's true. I I think that whether you're successful or not successful, certainly that changes your lifestyle. But I don't think you should be a different person once you're successful. I think you might live your life differently, but that's sort of it. Paris is asking, how do you get more professional when telling people no when they ask for free art after viewing a piece they like? Yes, saying no is hard. I think in the beginning, you never say no. You're just like, yes, yes, I'll do anything. But at a certain point, you have to start saying no. So how do you handle that, Jordan? So I got to be honest, that's something I've struggled with as well. Uh, And part of it, part of resolving that is recognizing your own worth as an artist and saying, look, I know that I put in this much time to develop this skill. Even if this drawing or painting took me less time than, than you would imagine, I still worked hard for this. And I'm worth the, and my piece is worth the money that I put that, that I put into it. And so people are asking for free art, it's just like, no, just say no. It's it's a waste of time. It's not helping you. And life is about giving, give and take. You know, there are some times where you might do a drawing of some for free, like a gift or something like that. But if people are asking for free artwork and you know you're worth more than that, just say no, give your price and just leave it at that. If if they're not willing to buy it, someone else is. The other side of that, though, is I think you can definitely evaluate the situation because if some random person just says, give me this, I'm not going to reply. But I have certain rates that I charge when I lecture, when I do faculty training for remote learning. And I actually had a school district that approached me and they did not have the money to pay me what I typically charge. But I knew that they really needed it. And I said, you know, it's fine. I'll just take whatever you guys are able to give me. And you can do that. I think you can charge the people that can afford it, and then you can do those gestures of goodwill when you feel like it. So I think that's okay. I wanna go back to Serafina's question because they did follow up. So the initial part was, do you ever have situations where someone appreciates your work, but for the wrong reasons, and they explain, for example, tokenizing or Orientalism? Jordan, what's your take on that? Oh boy. Um, (laughs) So, this. I think it, it's pretty obvious when people uh, when people are appreciating your work for that specific reason. And I think that you just have to really analyze the situation because everyone's different. It might be something like, wow, I've never seen artwork done like this before. Or it might be something more sinister in there. Uh, they, they like it simply because of that factor. It's it's a really difficult thing to, to judge either, either side because I try not to sit in the be in the position of the judgment seat where I'm determining why other people feel a certain way about my artwork because I feel like I'm you know me crossing into their minds is just not fair because I wouldn't want someone to do that to me. Um, so I think a lot of it is going to be intuition. You're going to probably recognize when there's something sleazy going on, and if they are being disrespectful towards you uh, or or your work or your, your teammate or you know whatever, then you have to nip that in the bud because that's just, that's not right. That's not, it's not even about the art, it's just you're you're not being a good person at that point. All right, our next piece of advice. Seems obvious, but wow, a lot of people do this. (laughs) Don't plagiarize. I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard about the whole Inktober controversy because the, the short version of the story is basically Jake Parker, who started Inktober, has been accused of plagiarizing. I believe it's, is it Alfonso Dunn? Is he the artist? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, so Alfonso Dunn wrote a book many, many years ago, and people have been showing side by side comparisons about how they're extremely similar in terms of format. And so I'm just showing here this Twitter thread where Jake Parker is saying, I did not plagiarize, and he explained. So you guys can look at that later. But I just can't believe people do this and think they're not going to get caught. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yeah, I agree with you, especially in the area that we live in now. I, every single time I've entered a new school or a new class, 
we get a sheet of paper of the rules and you know regulations of the class. And every single time, no matter if it's art school or math class or whatever, it's don't cheat, don't plagiarize, et cetera, et cetera. And you can get kicked out of place for that. You, your whole reputation is lost when you lie like that. When you try and take something that's not yours and pass it off as yours, that is the lowest of the low. And at the and you don't even have. I feel like people who do this don't even have the respect to at least fail on their own, uh, and you know, and go with that. I would feel much better if someone did that rather than plagiarize. So, yeah, I can't condone that whatsoever. Don't do it. And I mean, we're citing an example which is very high visibility, and a lot of people have heard about it. But you can do this on a smaller scale where maybe only one person knows that you plagiarize, but that doesn't mean it's not gonna come back to haunt you later. Because actually, I feel like there was some artwork we featured somewhere, I can't remember what video it was in, but somebody actually messaged me the next day. They said, hey, did you know this is an exact copy of this photo on Pinterest? And I was like, no, I had no idea because I didn't recognize it. But the thing is, you guys, with the internet now, it's so easy for somebody to say, yep, I saw that on Pinterest. Mm -hmm. And so that person did not get into public trouble. I mean, it really was just me and that other person that knew about it and I didn't make a big fuss about it. But it's like, if you get used to doing that and let's say you do get famous, I mean, what are the chances that you're gonna have learned your lesson at that point? I don't know. Right, your whole reputation can be trashed uh, for something like that. And you, when you lose your reputation, like someone said earlier, I think it was Blue, Blue of Spirit that said, when you, you, you only have one chance to make a good first impression. And when you tarnish your um, the, the image that people have of you, you don't, who knows how long it's gonna last for. It could last the rest of your life. and. And if you're trying to make a career out of out of doing art or anything else, and that's what people think of you and they don't trust you, that's a big deal. Here's a comment from Cerulean. I've been confused about the line between being inspired by art and plagiarizing it. Written material's obvious, but the line for creative work is inspiration versus copying it is much more difficult. Oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. The line is blurry for a lot of people, and I can't really define it. Like I can't really say do A, B, and C, now it's plagiarism. Yeah. If you don't do this, it's not. So it's very, very tricky. But I think we do have a stream, and I'll put it in the comments later, where Lauren and I talk about the difference between plagiarism and doing an homage. So doing an homage is sort of like acknowledging, I've seen this artist's work, I'm inspired by it, and being very transparent about that. And what I would look up, you guys, if you want to see the case that we cite, just Google Jeff Koons' string of puppies. That to me is plagiarism, <laughs> a very clear cut version. And there was a lawsuit and Jeff Koons lost. So check that out later, because I think that's a pretty clear cut situation if you want an example. OK, so let's talk about how social media really, I think, for it to work in terms of self-promotion you have to not just reply to comments that come to you. You have to comment on other people as well. Why do you think this is important, Jordan? When it, so what we've been talking about a lot of times is don't be selfish. Like I feel like that if we were to put everything we mentioned in a bullet point, it's just don't be selfish about it. Don't be, you know, don't be, uh, don't lift yourself up more than necessary. Don't, uh, you know, plagiarize, don't do that sort of stuff. When you reply to other people's on other people's pages and other people's artwork, it starts this reciprocal action. Like, hey, I want to acknowledge you because your artwork is really cool, and I'm not even asking for you to come to my page. I just want to let you know that you're doing a great job. And chances are, when some people some people get messages like that, they'll go on your page, and you might gain a new follower. That's happened to me several times, uh, where it's just, and I had no intention of that uh, of them following me back. It's just. I want to show my gratitude for their work. Uh, and yeah, so yeah, that's, it. that's all I can say about that. <laughs> and again, this sort of goes back to what we said earlier about how every fan matters. So for example, on the right-hand side, this is just a quick comment I left on somebody's Instagram who is a former student of mine. And you might think, oh, she's your former student, who cares, right? And I'm like, I think it matters. Like, why do I say, oh, she matters less 
Therefore, I'm not going to comment on hers, but I'm going to comment on this person that's bigger. It's like, to me, you just putting out good vibes yeah. in our community and it doesn't matter who it's for. But I think the thing about social media is people have to see that you treat it like a two way street. Mm -hmm. If you're only wanting to get the comments and not help out other people, it's really selfish. And people definitely notice stuff like this. Ra Nook is saying we can tag the artists and give them credit, right? Yes. Jordan, can you comment on this a little bit? Because people do tag me and you and stuff like that. And what's your reaction to that? Yeah, when people tag me, it's always, I'm, I've never have a, had a problem with that. Um, there have been times where I've put out, like done fan art of, of someone and I tag them, not necessarily expecting for them to see it, but I don't want people to think that I stole something and I'm not giving credit because that's where the plagiarism issue comes in. Um, it's like if you're writing a paper, you can you could totally use someone else's sentence in your work, but if you don't put those quotation marks and cite it, then that's where the problem comes in. And so, yeah, give credit where credit is due. I mean, to me, if you tag another artist, that's a positive thing. That's acknowledging them as an artist and saying, hey, you inspired me to do this. I don't get mad <laughs> when people tag me. I think if anything, it's the opposite, where if you don't get tagged and people don't acknowledge you, that's bad. And I have had people do that. And then other people comment and say, hey, that's Clara's. Don't do that. You're being a jerk. So definitely people will do that as well. And Ronuk is saying, this is something I don't do. I seldom comment on other people's posts. And I guess I'm seeing the consequences. Well, it takes time. I mean, it's definitely something you have to commit to. You can't just do it once every three months. And so you have to decide if that matters or not, depending on where you're at. And for some people, it may not be that important right now. So it's, it's up to you. We have more stuff in this stream, five networking tips for artists, because this is a big topic, what we're talking about. Let's talk about sincerity and why you should not be insincere in your comments, in your posts. What do we mean by this, Jordan? Basically, just don't lie. Um, I think it's very clear when someone is being disingenuous about something, uh, whether it's whether it's someone liking someone else's work or pretending to like someone else's work or just sharing a comment or feedback or whatever the case may be, it's something that's very intuitive and a lot of people can sense when someone is being fake, uh, especially in 2020 where we I've seen so many posts of uh, self-care posts about like stay away from fake people, they drain your energy, that type of stuff. And you don't wanna be one of those people. I think in order to make a positive impact, you have to be someone who's sharing the good vibes as we just talked about or, you know, send, sending positive things uh, another person's way. So, yeah. Speaking of good vibes, thank you so much, Frank, for your super chat. We always appreciate your support. As you know, we rely entirely on donations and all of our content is 100% free. So we really appreciate that, Frank. Yeah, you know something, you guys, Jordan and I, we're telling you guys things to not do, but I'm going to confess I have done some of the things that we're telling you not to do. I mean, I haven't done the plagiarism and all the like really bad stuff, but I definitely have done this, okay? Like when I was first getting started and everything and I thought to myself, oh, I need to get on the radar with somebody who is a bigger name artist. And maybe if I comment enough, they'll notice me and then do something for me. And the thing is, I didn't do it with artists who I genuinely liked. I would just pick people who were in my field who were doing really well. And that was stupid because why am I commenting on somebody if I don't truly like what they do? And that's what I do now. Like, even if an artist is really well connected and they know this one person and they're perfect for my field, if I don't like their stuff, I'm not going to comment because why would I do that? Right. So I think people can tell, don't you think, Jordan? Oh, oh totally. Um, I actually, a couple weeks ago, I did an interview on Instagram uh, with someone who worked on the show Avatar The Last Airbender. And I had never met this person. I never uh, had any interaction with them. And, I, and he was a little hesitant to even have me do the interview because he didn't know who I was. But I think towards... After, after a couple minutes of the interview, he realized how much information I knew about what he had done. And he's like, oh, okay, cool. This guy's really sincere. I'll tell him everything he needs, he wants to know. And people can sense that we really appreciate what it is that they do. 
And I think anytime you can place yourself in that situation where you're like, I am a huge fan of yours. I just want to pick your brain. I want to show you how much I appreciate what it is that you do. You know, people sense that people get that. And they're more, usually more willing to help you out when the time comes. Uh, it's, it's, you know, give and take. So yeah, keep, keep that principle in mind, I think. All right. We also are going to tell you guys, if you do some self-promotion thing, let's say you do a giveaway. A lot of artists will do that. They'll say, okay, then the next five people that I draw names are going to win this. It's a great way to do self-promotion. People get free artwork. And so it's very, very helpful. But you got to make sure you can follow through on that promise and make it really transparent because we have a monthly giveaway for everybody who's a Patreon supporter. So you could just give us a dollar a month and you're always entered into that giveaway. And so what I usually do, you've probably seen it on Instagram, I'll do a video of me actually pulling the name out of the bowl so that way it's transparent and people aren't like, oh, Clara, you just picked the person you like. Then I'm like, this is it. And so being really clear and not breaking promises, really important. Like the art dares, for example, we give prizes, and if we tell people we're going to give a prize and we don't do it, right. <laughs> that's really crappy. Right. So th this is all about accountability and being really true about what you actually say you're going to do. So it's like I'd rather not run a giveaway than not follow through because mm -hmm. that's really, really crappy. Paris is asking, could you use your social media to promote a new website? What are some other ways? Uh, yeah, when you're when you're on your account for social media, promote yourself. I mean, <laughs> if you, uh, I have my website linked to my uh, profile on Instagram, and so I mean, there's nothing wrong with that because you're on your own page. Now, if you start going on other people's pages and start going check out my website, that's where you might want to rewatch this video again, but, uh, but yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with that and, or, you know, doing an Instagram story post on Facebook, make a YouTube channel or whatever the case may be, uh, because you also have to get your name out there. And a lot of the tips we've given are a, a lot of it is about dealing with and interacting with other people. But when it comes to just you putting yourself out there, go on as many platforms as you can Just say, Hey, check me out. Don't be obnoxious you know, and start doing, start going in places where maybe people don't want you to comment, but <laughs> you definitely want to share what you have. Well, yeah, a lot of the spaces that we're talking about in this stream are when you're on someone else's YouTube channel or someone else's Instagram. For example, in the art prof content, it's like full out shameless promotion. I'm like, you guys are here because you like us. I'm going to be as self promotion as I want to be and I'm not going to care. But when you're in other people's spaces, you got to watch it. You, you can't just say whatever you want. Guys, we have an art prof share today. Art prof share is when you guys make something in reaction to one of our videos. And so today we are looking at these hand drawings from John Russ. Drapo. Sorry, I'm sure I did not say that correctly. But John talks in their statement. They said they recently started drawing after a long time, started watching our channel, and they actually did this draw along that I did based on hands very recently. And so John talks about getting a better grasp on seeing the hands as shapes, putting it into action. And they say, I do tend to outline a little bit too much. And the stream reminded me to work inside the shapes first, which I did. What do you think about John's gesture drawings, Jordan? I think these are a lot of fun. And maybe maybe this is just me. I tend to work in line. I, I always love seeing other line art and, and, and other artwork. Uh, but it's so fun and gestural. The mark making is really solid. And the hands feel three-dimensional. They don't feel um, sloppy in any way. They don't feel like like I feel I sense the bones and muscles underneath the skin. So I think you're succeeding in, on the, all those points. Which is surprising because I think a lot of people would think, oh, if the drawing is really loose and gestural, you probably don't have a good sense of bone. But I'm looking at the drawing in the upper left-hand corner. John, those are knuckles. <laughs> like You really listen to the advice about knuckles being such an important anchor in the structure of the hand. And I just think you have a beautiful sensitive touch. I think you really understand the lighting, like the shadow on the hand on the right is very bold and yet the structure is coming across really, really nicely. So, so wonderful 
to see this. And we're getting some really nice comments from people in the chat. Tammy says, love these hands. Blue Wren is saying loose and so emotional. Cerulean says variety of marks. And Seven Angelic is saying they feel like they have movement to them almost. So yeah, really good job, John. And I hope you keep drawing with us. If you guys want to submit your own Art Prof share, just go to artprof.org, click on tutorials. There is a purple button that says submit your Art Prof share. Just fill out this form. We'd be happy to consider you guys for a YouTube shout out. Or you can just tag us on Instagram and use hashtag artprofshare. We try to share as many of these as we can in our Instagram stories because we love it when you guys make work in response to all of our content. Artprof has a podcast available on Spotify and also on iTunes. We also are gonna be over in the Artprof Discord in a few minutes in the post live streams channel. Hope you guys will come hang out with the cool kids and subscribe to our YouTube channel, join the Art Prof family. And thank you so much to our top Patreon supporters who make everything possible. Thank you to everybody for contributing to the discussion. You guys really enrich the conversation for us. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.